with me. Go with me if you will. Let's go back to Numbers chapter 13, verse number one. I'm going to skip through some of the verses because I want to get it all to you. I want you to see how this thing unfolds. So let's go to Numbers 13, verse one. And the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, send men to spy out the land of Canaan, which I am giving to the children of Israel. So, again, here's what he's doing. He's saying, I'm going to give this land to the children of Israel, but I'm still requiring for you to do something. Are you with me so far? For from each tribe of their fathers, you shall send a man, every one a leader among them. So Moses sent them to the wilderness of Paran, according to the command of the Lord, all of them men all of them men who were heads of the children of Israel. Uh, here's a quick side note for you. Leadership appointment does not quantify leadership quality. Man, I really want to hang on that point, but I ain't got time because there's a lot in this. So verse number 18, Moses says, see what the land is like. Do you see, do you see that in your text? See what the land is like, whether the people in it are strong or weak, few or many. Verse 19, whether the land they dwell in is good or bad. All I really want you to focus on here is what does the land look like? Verse 20, whether the land is rich or poor. What does the land look like? Sometimes. God is sending us into a new place, a place of promise, a place of destiny, but it doesn't look like what we expected because there's adversity where we're going into. We just came out of adversity. We just came out of bondage, and now God is sending us back into more adversity than we ever faced before because quiet as it's kept, there's more adversity and promise than there was in bondage. You was only dealing with Egypt when you was in bondage. Now you got to deal with all these ites. But he says this, he says, be of good courage and bring some of the fruit of the land. The spies returned after 40 days. They brought back word to Moses and Aaron and to all the congregation and showed them the fruit of the land. So they did a portion of what they were supposed to do. Then they told him and said, we went to the land where you sent us. And, and, Y'all, y'all see this resume for me? Y'all see, you, anytime you start seeing a resume, know that excuses are going to follow. And so when you're dealing with God, when you try to pull out that resume, no excuses are going to follow. And, and, and they say, you know, uh, uh, the land that you sent us into, we went there. It truly flows with milk and honey. And this is the fruit. Now, it's significant that they said an amen, so to speak, that it flows with milk and honey. Because the word of Exodus chapter 3, verses 7 and 8, God had told them, when I send you into the land, it's going to be flowing with milk and honey. So the Lord has proven himself to be a man of his word. Yet again, somebody say yet again. Yes. Nevertheless, the people who dwell in the land are strong. Oh, here we go. The people in the land are strong. The cities are fortified and very large. Moreover, we saw the descendants of Anak there, and the descendants of Anak came from the giants, they came from the giants. The Amalekites dwell in the land of the south. The Hittites, the Jebusites, and the Amorites dwell in the mountains. And the Canaanites dwell by the sea. The banks of Jordan. Everywhere we go, we saw an enemy. Every, come on, can you imagine this? Everywhere you sent us, we found adversity. God just said that you were pulling us in the promise. But every place that you told us to recon, there's adversity there. Can you feel the discouragement creeping up even in your own sanctified mind? That God just sent me in the promise after I've gotten out of bondage, after Pharaoh's army drowned it in the Red Sea, talking Mary. I don't know what that have to do with anything, but anyway, let me go back to what I'm talking about. So after that adversity, I'm seeing everywhere I went for the last 40 days, I'm walking this great land. That you said was promised to us. And every, in the mountains I find an enemy. By the water I find an enemy. In the valleys I find an enemy. Right. On the plains I find an enemy. Everywhere I go, there's an enemy. And if it's not enough that there's an enemy there, there's giants there too, y'all. So it's not enough that it's enemies, there's giants there too. Mm -hmm. And we didn't expect this because, see, when you was naming all those ites, you didn't name the descendants of Anak. 
You didn't name the Amorites either, but, you, but, but these giants, we weren't prepared for this. Are you with me so far? But then Caleb cried at the people of Moses. Now we know they were prone to, to, to complain and murmur and do that, that kind of thing. We know Israel, right? We know us. We know us. But Caleb said, y'all be quiet. Hush up now. I don't know how he said it, but he said something like that. He quieted the people before Moses said, let us go up at once and take possession, for we are well able to overcome it. I want you to say this from your sanctified soul. Say, we are well able to overcome it. Not just we are able, we are well able to overcome it. I want to get back into it. Let's go. The given yet requires an undertaking. Yah was given the land of Israel. He was given the land to Israel, yet he still required them to do some things. He required recon. And what that means is to ascertain strategic features. I want you to look at the landscape that's in front of you. I want you to look at the enemy, but look at the landscape. See what grows there. Because you're going to be living here in a little while. So I want you to see what grows there. I know I promised it to you, but I want you to do some reconnaissance. Then I want you to do some retrieval. I want you to pull back. I want you to bring back so the people can see that the place that I'm sending them into is fruitful. And so bring back some fruit from the land. And then I want you to do something else. I want you to retain something. Did y'all see that in the text? I want you to retain good courage. Uh huh. I want you to retain good courage, not just going into the assignment, but throughout the assignment. Because it's one thing to think that you have courage going into something, but courage is tested when you're pushed to your limits. Courage is tested when there's danger involved. Courage is tested when there's even the threat of danger involved. Do you understand what I'm telling you? But he needs you. He says, I need you to retain this courage. Then I need you to do one more thing. I need you to return and report the findings. I need you to, re I need you, hear me closely, church. I need you to give me your perspective. Okay. I need you to give me your perspective. I know I told you I was giving this to you, but I need your perspective. Uh -huh. Now listen at this. Don't deny the details of the difficulties. Sometimes when we're in faith, we think that we're in denial. No, 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 no. Faith never tells you to go into denial. Faith doesn't tell you to not admit that you have a condition. I don't know where we came from. It was a couple years ago. People told you not to say certain things. Don't say that you got the condition. Yeah, if, I, if something is in my body, I got it. It doesn't have me. Hello? And so since this thing is in me, whatever, I'm, if I know a name for it, I'm going to call it out by name. by name. If I got COVID, I'm calling out by name because, God, you can get rid of COVID. Oh, come on here. If I got cancer, God, you can get rid of If I got cardiac problems, God, you can get rid of that too. If I got kidney problems, God, you can get rid of that too. I'm calling it out just like I called out the Amorites, just like I called out the Jebusites, just like I called out the Hippites, the Hittites, the Hivites, the Canaanites. I'm calling them out. I know the name of my enemy so God can vanquish my enemy. Come on, Jesus. My adversity. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Don't deny the details of the difficulties. They said eternal, but God said it's not over. I don't think you heard what I just said. They said it was terminal, but God says it's not over. You ought to give God praise right there. Don't let the details of the, di the difficulties bring about discouragement. When we start seeing just how detailed and how large an enemy is, because if you've been believing even a little while, you'll believe that God will do something for you. Amen. But when you start running into multiple opponents and multiple adversities, that's when doubt starts to creep in, if we be honest. <laughs> doubt starts to creep in because, God, I was ready yes. for one of them ice. I was ready for the Hittites, but the Jebusites and the Amorites and the Canaanites, all them ites, 
I got to deal with it. Yeah, you got to deal with all of them. Don't let it bring discouragement. The text says, be of good courage. If you're around anybody, just encourage them right now. Say, be of good courage. Yeah, yeah. Listen close. Recon, retrieval, and return were accomplished. So they got three out of the four things right. They got the recon right. They got the retrieval of the fruit right. They returned and they got that right. However, there was a deficit in retention. And right now, what we're facing in the body of Christ and what we're facing as believers is a deficit of retention. Oh, God, help me here. There's a deficit of retention. It seems like we can't remember what God told us. It, 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 it seems like we can't remember that God has delivered us from things that are worse than this. God has, some, God, God has delivered some of us from death, uh, from near-death experiences, from, from, from things that should have killed us. Does anybody have a testimony that's listening to the sound of my voice right now where well, you know that you should have been dead? You could have been dead. People had already counted you dead. But somehow, some way, you're here. But there seems to be when we face a new difficulty, we have a retention deficit. We forget the word that God spoke to us. As soon as we get far enough from the promise that God gave us, I'm reminded of Abraham. After about 10 years, he started losing retention of what God told him. And he starts trying to figure it out. And he has, and the Hagar effect kicks in. Well, maybe God said, since you connected to my wife, then maybe we can go through Hagar. No, that's not what God said. That is not what he said. Well, maybe I didn't hear God correctly because he said that this was the promised land, but this promised land seems full of peril. <laughs> All right. God told me, I heard from the Lord that this year was going to be my year. I'm going to deal with it. God told me, I heard the Lord that this year was going to be my year, but half the year is almost over and I can't even leave. Come on now. How in the world am I supposed to accomplish what you set out for me to do this year in six months? God is telling some of us, I ain't going to let you do it until it's three months left. Because God has a history of doing more with less. Okay. When there's a deficit in our life, there's an opportunity for God to deliver us. Okay, okay. Yes, Caleb quieted the people before Moses and said, let us go up at once and take possession. We are well able to overcome it. We find out Caleb is a man of collaboration and cohesion. So he says, let us. He didn't say, I'm going to take care of this thing by myself. I'm such a big and bad leader that I can do this all by myself. He said, no, I want to encourage us all. We can do this thing together. Somebody say, we in this thing together. That's right. It don't matter what it looked like. We're in this thing together. He said, so he's a man of collaboration and he's a man of cohesion. He's trying to unify the people. Can I get some leaders to get with me or I can get with you so that we can unify this body and make a move that's going to shake up this whole world? I ain't got to be in charge. You ain't even got to put my name nowhere. Just let me know what you're doing and I'll take a part of it. Yeah, try me and see won't I do it. That's how we ought to be. If somebody's already doing it, why are you trying to start up your own? Okay, let me, let me come back to what I'm talking about before I get in trouble. We see that Caleb is a man of conviction and command. How do I know that? It says, let us go and take possession. You got to have some command in your voice to say that. You got to have some conviction about this thing that we are going to get what God told us that we can have. If anybody want to open up your mouth, say, I'm going to get what God told me I could have. Yeah, 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 yeah. We find that Caleb is a man of confidence and a man of courage. Right. We are well able to overcome it. I'm confident in this thing. I shall remain confident in this. Get this, though. Listen real close. Courage or cowardice is a matter of perspective. Courage or cowardice 
is a matter of perspective. Adversaries and adversities are only obstacles. Did you hear what I said? Adversaries and adversities are only obstacles. They are not finalities. They are not insurmountable. Say, we can get over this. It doesn't matter what this is, we can get over this. Well, however long this lasts, we can get over this. Do you believe it? Truth be told, sometimes the giving of God comes with the grind of good courage. God says, I promise you something. And sometimes when we hear the promises of God, I don't know what gets into our system where we think we can lean back now on our blessed assurance and just wait for it to happen. What God said is for me. Is for me. Yeah. Now go get it. We say stuff like faith without works is dead, but then our actions are dead, and we say we have a lively faith. Hold on, wait a minute. Something doesn't make sense there. Something doesn't balance out there. But sometimes the giving of God comes with a ground of good courage, which means that you have to participate into this thing. You got to, put, you got, you got to be obedient to the word, don't you, do you not? Did he not give the land to Israel? He had given it to them before they had even left Egypt. But when they got, they were making their way towards it. He says, what I need you to do, I need you to do some reconnaissance. They did that. I need you to do some retrieval. They did that. I need you to return. They did that. Ah, but I need you to retain good courage. There was a deficit. There was a problem. I want you to listen close at this as well. Promise and permission from God grants plans and power to take possession promise and permission so you got to have the promise of God and then you have to have the permission of God oh God see they have the promise and then they have permission to go and spy out the land did they not but promise and permission from God grants plans and power so God didn't have you to look at that thing for no reason he wanted you he wanted to see how you were going to look at the situation that you were facing and if you would have brought back the right report, I wonder what would be happening now. Here's the point. Here's the point. You enjoyed the message so far? Amen. Is it making sense to you? Do you feel encouraged? Can I turn this thing around? Here's the point of the whole message. You got to have a dog in the fight. Hold on, wait a minute, wait a minute. I've been hearing about perspective. I've been hearing about leadership. What do you mean you got to have a dog in a fight? Can I tell you about it? What do you mean you got to have a dog in a fight? You got to have a vested interest in the outcome of the situation or the conflict. What do I mean that you got to have a dog in a fight? You need to have a divine interest in the promise and the plans of God. What do you mean by that? I'm not talking about false expectations because sometimes God gives us a promise and then we have false expectations of how that promise is going to unfold. We think that God says, I'm going to give you a promise, but now I don't have to do anything. No, sometimes you're going to have to fight. You're going to have to scratch and you're going to have to claw your way through. But God gave it to me. Yeah, but there's still a grind involved in it. And some of us get irritated with the grind because the grind wells us out. The day-to-day -day grind. How many of you created a business and it took you years to create it and you're grinding it out still right now? It took you years to get it off the ground, off the ground. But you got to grind in it right now. You say, God, I'm trying to do a godly thing. I'm trying to do a good thing. Why is it such a grind? God says, I'm going to get glory out of your grind. And so if you would just grind for the glory of God but you gotta have a dog in a fight say I gotta have a dog in a fight I'm going to tell you it's going to make sense in a little while. No false expectations. You can't even have real intimidations. Wait a minute. So there's false expectations and then there's real intimidations. Because when you see them giants, that's real intimidation. But you can't let the real intimidation break your faith. I felt intimidation for a moment. I understood it only happened for a moment. But you can't let a momentary thing become a permanent mindset. And so what happens is I saw the giants. And at first I looked at the giants and I saw how big the giants was. I wasn't in denial of how big they 
they were, but I said I serve a God. I would that they had heard the word. I know that this was before the time of David, but I will. I would that they had the heart of David. Who is this uncircumcised and not descended? Who is this uncircumcised Philistine? What is a giant to my God? So what is it that we need to have? God-led determination. God-led determination. What do you mean we got to have a dog in a fight? The meaning of Caleb's name is dog. The meaning of Caleb's name is dog. Listen. We may live up to a name. Or we may not live up to a name, or we can na- make a name for ourselves. There are some names that have such a stain on them that you won't even you won't name nobody Judas. You won't uh, you won't find too many Benedicts out there. You know Benedict. You you know what I'm saying? You won't find uh, you'll find some Brutuses out there, but but you know it's, it's, it's Slim Pickens. You want to say Ette Brutus if you know anything about literature? But I'm talking about it's it, 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 it's very unusual that when a stain is on a name for somebody to call their child. Very unusual, not, 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 you know, not undone, but unusual. And so when we see this name, Caleb, and, you know, you start looking up names for your babies. What am I going to name my baby? What am I going to name my business? And, and we look at the name and sometimes we look at the name. I don't get why God called me to call this thing this name. So, so it, isn't it interesting that in the self-same chapter that Hoshea gets a new name? Joshua. Yeah, Hoshea gets a new name. Joshua gets a new name. And Joshua gets to live up to his name. And here comes Caleb. Joshua ain't said a word yet. Oh, God help me here. Joshua ain't said a word yet. We know who Joshua's going to become, but Joshua ain't speaking right now. So when Joshua ain't speaking, I need Caleb to speak up. God, that's good to me. When Joshua ain't speaking, I need Caleb to speak up. And so what Caleb is doing, Caleb said, hold on, y'all quiet now. I got a word. Let me bark at you for a little bit. I mean, let me speak to you. You got to have a dog in a fight. You got to have a dog in a fight. Are you going to let a name define you? Or are you going to define the name? I know what they called you. I know what they said about you. But are you going to let them just call you that name? I know they dogged you out. But you got to have a dog in this fight. Can I tell you some more? Sometimes acquisition is a matter of perspective. Can I break it all the way down? Say, I got to have a dog in a fight. I recall, I, I recall a man named Gideon, <laughs> whose also name was Jerubabel. Uh, and, 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 and him and his company were facing the Midianites. Uh, and, 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 and God said something about the people that was with him because he had a whole gang of people with him. And he says, unless Israel get glory for itself, I'm going to reduce the odds. That means I'm going to make it worse for you than it was. Right. Hold on, wait a minute, God. Didn't you tell us to go in there and defeat the Midianites? Now, but before you go in there and defeat the Midianites, I got to make sure that I I get glory out of it so you can't even go with all the people that you want to go with I'm about to reduce the odds and I'm gonna raise the stakes hold on God ain't you the God of glory I'm gonna re- I'm gonna reduce the odds and I'm gonna raise the stakes wait a minute you gonna make it more difficult for me than it had to be I had all these people with me and I thought they was ready to roll but 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 you said no you said no send them home yeah yeah yeah, yeah. send them away, send them away. All right. God says whoever is fearful and afraid, All right. let them depart. Them people wouldn't have fought with you anyway. All right. All right. They would have been scared, but God said, no, send them away. So if you, fi- if you, fr- if you scary, get from around me. <laughs> if you scary, get from around me. Yeah. You understand what I'm telling you? And 22,000 people return. But 10,000 remain. And God said, you know what? I'm still not going to get glory out of them 10,000. Right. The people are still too many. And he says, bring them down to the water. I want to see something. I want to see something. Somebody say, I got to have a dog in the fight. I want to see something. I need to see how how you about to act in this situation. 
I need you to see who going to kneel and who going to lap this thing up like a dog. Because if you ever seen the way a dog drink water, he always ready and alert. He going to take a sip and he going to look around. He going to take a sip and he going to look around. He's not going to get down on his knees because if you get down on the knees, that's a little bit too long sometimes to get back up. And anybody that's got some age to him, some season to him, no, get down on them knees ain't easy as it used to be. Uh, take a <laughs> little oil in this season. <laughs> You don't know what it costs for this oil. I know how much it hurt, though. Anywho, but you got to have a dog in the fight. You say, look, whoever laps up like a dog, I need you to set them right. apart. Right. Oh, God. Right. He said, whoever, whoever, whoever gets this thing like a dog, I, I, I need you to set them apart because them the people I'm going to use. Can I preach something to the underdogs right now? God help me here. And my brother's a witness. I've always been a fan of the underdog. I've always been in the corner of the underdog. It's the person who you don't expect to win. It's the person who you don't expect to speak up. Caleb isn't as herald as Joshua is, but Caleb once upon a time had to stand up in front of people and say, be quiet. I know they didn't listen, but he had to say, be quiet because we are well able to overcome it. And if the people of God would have listened to Caleb. They wouldn't have got stuck in a cycle. Sometimes we're waiting for the most famous person to say something. Because we'll listen to Joshua and we'll ignore Caleb. Y'all ain't hearing what I'm talking about. Because if Joshua ain't saying nothing, then it can't be that important. If so-and-so major televangelist don't say something, it ain't got no weight to it. They've been saying the same stuff that your preacher been saying, but uh, they ain't got no weight behind them because they ain't got a mega ministry. Man, mega ministry ain't about how many people come to the church. Mega ministry is how you perceive the word of God and how you walk out that word of God. That's mega ministry when you live to the max and you minister to the max of the ability that God gave you. And, and, and God's trying to make a mega ministry out of each and every individual if we would listen to his word. Are oh, you hearing what I'm saying? Somebody say, I got a mega ministry in me. I know I'm the underdog. I know I'm the underdog. That means there's a dog in this fight. You dig what I'm saying? There's a dog in this fight. I know everybody. I know what the reports are coming back here. Joshua ain't said nothing right now. He going to say something in the future. But I'll, let me hold on, Joshua. I got something to say. Hold on, Joshua. I got something to say. We are well able to overcome it. I don't, I don't want to get stuck in a cycle. See, these people can't go back in time, and they can't undo what they did. They got stuck. They were sitting out for 40 days. Isn't it interesting? They were sitting out for 40 days, and for 40 days, not retaining the good courage that Moses sent them with, they were stuck in a cycle for 40 years. From this very report. The cycle started with a report of unbelief. Are you hearing what I'm saying? The cycle in the wilderness began from a report of unbelief. That's what unbelief does. It puts you a cycle of wondering. Where you're in motion, but not in progress. And some of us are confused. We're confusing motion with progress. Because they kept moving, did they not? But they never made progress until a whole generation died. I don't want to lose a generation trying to make progress. But we got to change our mindsets. We got to see this thing the way God's. We got to have that confidence. Okay, God, you told us it's only going to be 300 of us. Very well. Well, at least there ain't no scared folk with us. All right. <laughs> at least we ain't got no scary people. You understand what I'm telling you? You got to have a dog in a fight. Gideon had a dog in a fight. The Midianites was subdued. Victory was acquired. Because God said, I need you to look at how these people operate. He sent them on a recon mission. I need you to see how these people operate. And based on the way that they operate, those are the people that you're going to select. So sometimes you got to get through, you got to go through, uh, uh, you got to go through the process of being like, we don't want no scared people. We don't want no people that get too comfortable in consumption. Okay. And we ain't got time to kneel down right now. We got to be ready to go. Uh, where my dolls at? Oh, I'm sorry. I had to do it. Can I tell you one more? Can I tell you one more? There was a Canaanite woman. She came 
and worship Christ, saying, Lord, help me. And the disciples want to send her away. The disciples like, she's troublesome. Send her away. And then Yeshua says, this is one of my most favorite things that Yeshua says, because this ain't the picture that we always get of Yeshua. We get the gracious Yeshua. We get the loving Yeshua. But I like this. I like because this was Jesus being real. Jesus effectively said, I didn't come for you. I didn't come for you. He says this. It is not good to take children. He's not good to take the children's bread and throw it to little dolls. Oh, wait a minute. It's not good to let the children's bread go to little dolls. And the Canaanite woman, her perspective is different. I see what you're saying, Lord. But check this out. Don't even the little dolls get the crumbs from the master's table? I'm telling you that sometimes acquisition is a matter of perspective. God wasn't coming for her. Oh, God. Jesus wasn't coming for her. He said to himself, hey, I ain't come for you. I know he said it a different way, but I ain't come for you. But yet still this woman had not just good faith. She had great faith. Because she says, I'm going to look at this a different way. What you speak is true, Lord. It ain't good that the little dolls get the children's bread. But I'm going to tell you what I'm going to do. This underdog right here. I'll take the crumbs. I'll, I'll be a crumb snatcher in this season. I wonder how many people will humble themselves before God. I know God gave you a promise. I know he said you, I, I dare you to become a crumb snatcher in the spirit. It'll be like, God, I, I know that don't sound right. I know that don't sound like what you used to hear because we want to be kings and priests. But sometimes kings and priests got to be crumb snatchers. Yeah. I'll take the crumbs. Because I got a dog in, because she had a dog in the fight, but her dog in the fight was a little different. Uh Because her dog in the fight wasn't nothing to do with her. Her dog in the fight was her daughter was being tormented. Happy Mother's Day. (laughs) Her daughter was being tormented by a demon. Mm -hmm. And who going to fight for you like mama fight for you? Who going to fight? Mama's like, hold on, hold on, wait a minute. Not my baby. I don't, not, not my baby. Now, y'all know how you can be, you can be seasoned and mama going to still say, not my baby. Is she still here with us? She's not my baby. You can do about anything you want, but not my baby. You can be a grown man, 300 pounds. Your mama could be five foot nothing, 100 pounds circle away, and she'll still stand in front of you. Not my baby. Do you understand what I'm saying? She had a dog in the fight because her, her, her daughter was being tormented. And even though Jesus didn't come for her, she says, look, I see this thing differently. If you just give me the crumbs, I'll make do with the little that you give me. Gideon, Gideon understood after a while, I can do little if you just give me. What I understand that there's giants in the land, but all you got to do is give me the go ahead and I'm going up to possess the land. The text tells us that the, 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 the demon cruelly tormented her. But she says, Lord, I'll take the crumbs. He says, woman, how great is your faith? I'm not going to give you the crumbs. I'm going to give you all that you desire. And so deliverance was acquired. Do you understand what I'm telling you? Because of perspective. Because even though God was telling her, Jesus himself was telling her, this ain't fit. He was testing her. And a woman said, I see this thing differently. Gideon's going into battle. I got all these people with me, at least over like 30 something, whatever thousands of people I got with me. But I want you to see this thing differently because I don't want Israel to think that they got this thing of their own doing. Send all the uh, send, send all the scared people home. Send all, send all the people that get too comfortable in consumption home. That's how I looked at it. Uh-huh. You're too comfortable. Amen. You're too comfortable. Yeah. I need you to be ready. Yes, I understand that you need to take partake of the water, but you're getting too comfortable. Uh-huh. I don't want you to just sit here, leave your water pot, get up and go. Yeah. You understand what I'm telling you? I need you to get, I need, come on, get ready to do this thing. I know that you see these giants that are in the land. I know that we see the tremendous things that is in front of us. I know that we see a large enemy in front of us in this day and time right now. 
How is it that we're going to get back to ministry? We should have never left it in the first place. But now we're going to have to see ministry differently. We're going to have to have another perspective. We can't go in there with the old lenses of your pre-COVID lenses. We can't go in there with pre-COVID lenses in this season. We got to go and change it and say, what is God saying about it? Because there's still an effective way that we can minister even in this time right now. Amen. Uh-huh. I'm still believing God that should the situation arise, that, 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 that if, the, the, that, that if the, the sick need to be healed, that they can be touched and recover. I'm still believing God for that. And I believe that no transmission is going to happen. Why? I believe God. Do you understand what I'm saying? If he's able to heal leprosy and all that other stuff, he can heal anything. Now make sure that you got permission. Amen, somebody. Make sure that you got permission. Because we know what happens when you go into a situation and you have no power. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You get that Skiba treatment. Do you understand what I'm saying? But do you have a dog in a fight? Do you have an interest in the promises of God? I am talking about the promises that he promised to you. Yeah. Are you looking at the land? Are you bringing back the fruit? They're bringing back the fruit to go into the fight. I told you this, this is a feast of weeks. But they're bringing back the fruit to go into the fight. Because there's something that grows in the place of conflict. God, thank you. There's something that's growing in the place of conflict, mm -hmm. and it's promised to me. My Lord. But sometimes I'm going to have to grind to get it. Yeah. I got to have a dog in a fight. All right. All right. Where are the Caleb's? Come on. Where, are Where are the Caleb's of this generation? Oh, huh? Mm -hmm. Where are the people with, if you will, a Caleb spirit? All right. Where are the underdogs at? I understand that Joshua is needed, but you, under, you got to understand. I like to, uh, we, many of us are, my, are watching a documentary right now, and even the great one had to say, you can't say my name and not say his name. Uh-huh. No, we ain't doing no promos. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Even the great one, the goat himself said, you can't say my name without saying his name. You can't really speak of Joshua if you don't speak of Caleb. Because, truth be told, we hear from Caleb first. <laughs> and Caleb is like, I'm okay not being first in command. All right. I'm okay because I know who God called. I love how much stuff this gets into because it's really dealing with leadership on all kind of levels. And it's dealing with laity on all kind of levels. When it's saying when the man of God has something to say, we need to follow exactly what he says. Don't just don't just return. Don't just retrieve. Don't just recon. Retain the word. Retain the good courage throughout the assignment. Come back with the courage you went into it with. Don't get scared now because something is out there. It's an invisible enemy. What do you think the devil is? Right. It's everywhere. Uh-huh. We don't know when it's going to pop up. Uh-huh. It's just another adversity. It's not insurmountable. It's just an obstacle. But you got to have a dog in a fight. Do you have an interest in ministry for real? Right. Not just when the lights are on. Not just when you're in front of the camera. Yes. I'm talking about when you can answer them inboxes. Hello, somebody. Right. When you can answer them phone calls late in the midnight at a hello, somebody. Right. When you can go and give to people without being seen and trying to be seen. Right. I understand that we, it, it, uh, it, it's crazy right now because whether you show it or don't, people still say you ain't doing it. That's right. That's right. So I get the dynamics. I get the, the dichotomy that's in front of us. The point of the matter is, do you have a dog in a fight? Do you have a vested interest into the promise of plans of God uh, yeah. that you would see it through, that you would follow through? Be of good courage in this season. Be of good courage in this season. I want to talk to every believer. I know what this weekend is. I know what we're celebrating. So who fight for you like mama? God. But who fight for you more than the people who care for you, for real, that ain't scared? 
I remember, I remember this, I'll say this for this, I remember praying for a condition and looking at the situation, you wouldn't dare put your hands on it. And I said, God, I just felt led to touch and agree. And what I put my hands on wasn't nothing pretty. What I put my hands on didn't smell right, didn't look right. And I don't know why I was led to do that, but I was just following the plans of God. I wasn't trying to be nothing spectacular. I just led, felt led to touch and agree. And I did so. Now, does that mean that I'm going to put my hands on everything that passed by me? No, I have permission. Do you get what I'm talking about? I'm not telling anyone to do something crazy. I'm telling you to do something that you are permitted to do. In the city, they won't allow you to do certain things unless you have a permit. In the kingdom, it's the same way. If you have a permit, you, if you do not have a permit, you cannot operate. But I know that God has given us permission to go up at once and take possession. If he promised it to you, it's yours already. But what that means is you got to have a dog in the fight. You got to grind to get some of this stuff. Sometimes God will give you some stuff and you don't have to do anything for it. But there are some things that God says, I need you to recon. I need you to retrieve. I need you to return but I need you to retain, retain this word in your season of difficulty, retain this word when fear creeps in, retain this word when doubt creeps in, retain this word when you see the giants. Don't go into denial, just retain the word. When God tell you to lay hands, don't ask another question, lay hands. Amen. When God says pray, don't wait until you get into your prayer closet. Pray right where you are. Right. Huh? If you're driving, pull over. Pray. Yes. You can pray with your eyes open, quiet as can. You sure can. <laughs> but do it right then. All right. When we obey God, there's a way that we should go about it. Amen. We should do it immediately. immediately. Exactly. exactly. And sincerely. And sincerely. <laughs> the way that the Lord said to do it. <laughs> do you have a dog in the fight? If you don't got one, you better go get one. You feel like an underdog, this message was for you. You feel like things are insurmountable, you can't overcome them, this message was for you. If you've been waiting to do something, here's the word. Go up. Let us, let us go up at once and take possession of what God has promised us. It's going to be a day-to-day grind. It's going to be a battle. I'm not telling you it's going to be easy. But all these ites, they're just obstacles. They're not fantastic.